Our next speaker is uh, Attila Cardos, who's a cardiologist from Milton Keynes. Um, he's going to be talking about low flow, low gradient with normal but preserved ejection fraction. Thank you, Attila. Thank you. Just setting up the computer here. Right, uh, Chairperson and uh, colleague and uh, attendees. Um, uh, the title I was given today to talk about it was uh, aortic stenosis, low flow, normal ejection fraction. I was thinking about, so what can I do with this? It's one of the most boring topic one can have uh, given to talk about. Uh, I try to translate into really talking about the products low flow, low gradient severe aortic stenosis. These are patients with normal left ventricular function but uh, have got low flow uh, uh, in the LVOT uh, uh, area to measure and have got severe valve stenosis. I hope you won't be bored to death. I try to make it a bit more educational. And that will be the outline that I would like to cover today uh, uh, to uh, talk about the evolution of grading of aortic valve stenosis in general to be able to understand the uh, paradoxical low flow severe aortic valve stenosis uh, phenotype development. And I will, uh, I, will, I will use the paradoxical low flow severe aortic valve stenosis uh, interchangeably with the PLF just to uh, have a bit of a short abbreviation of that. Uh, I would like to cover also the uh, 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 capture of the prevalence of uh, the uh, PLF uh, severe aortic valve stenosis phenotype and uh, <clears throat> understand a bit is this a problem of the measurement? Or is it the real phenotype? Uh, minimizing error of measurements of the continuity equation related components of the LVOT area, LVOT VTI and aortic valve VTI, would it make any difference if those patients who have been uh, detected after the appropriate uh, measurements of uh, aortic valve area by the uh, uh, correctly used uh, continuity components remained in the PLF severe uh, uh, group of patients? Who will be these patients? What's the clinical uh, uh, parameters of these patients? And does it matter? What's the prognosis of these patients? Do we need to work, uh, uh, worry about these patients at all? And we'll finish it off by uh, talking about the management of these patients with uh, products uh, low flow severe valve stenosis patients as per recommendations and guidelines. Almost certainly I will overrun, but I just put one more last point in there uh, if you have got some time to talk about it. Very happy to put in a context of our latest research. So what's the evolution of uh, aortic valve stenosis grading? In general, this goes back 42 years ago when uh, JKO from the States uh, has uh, run the validation study of the continuity equation against the uh, goal in equation. And they, they uh, aortic valve area was set uh, after this uh, validation at 0 0.75 to describe severe aortic valve stenosis. The mean gradient, they said, it will correlate with more than 50 mils mercury. In 1998, that's 10 years later, uh, only when the AAG and ACC, ACC guidelines have uh, uh, defined the uh, definition of grades of aortic valve stenosis to mild, uh, more than 1.5 uh, uh, cm square, moderate between 1.1 and 1.5, and severe to uh, one or less than one centimeter square. <coughs> Note, that they have not really uh, uh, used for grading purposes, either peak velocity or the mean gradient. In 2006, the same similar authors uh, as, as, as the, 20, the 1998 guidelines writers uh, have uh, incorporated now, based on the clinical outcomes, the peak velocity and the mean gradient, in addition to the effective orifice area by the continuity equation into their guidelines. And they come up with this table that we do use all the time in our daily practice. <coughs> of course, this has been reiterated and used in, uh, in the subsequent guidelines throughout up to the 2020 and 21 guidelines as well, lately published both ACC and the European Society. But by uh, forcing into category of variable the uh, velocity, the area, and the gradient, mean gradient, 
we are committing ourselves to a problem. Because there will be patients who will have an uh, aortic valve area by the uh, continuing equation of less than one centimeter square. But they will have lower mean gradient than 40, and they will have lower velocity than four meters per second. So discrepant aortic valve stenosis patients have not been really highlighted and appreciated in these guidelines. <clears throat> and why should they have? There was no data out there to, 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 to do and to say anything about this up till 2007. <clears throat> That's the time when a seminal paper by uh, Hachicha, <clears throat> by the Pibaro group in, in Canada, has uh, uh, looked at this discrepant severe aortic valve stenosis patients. That is the products low flow, low gradient, severe aortic valve stenosis patients, despite of preserved ejection fraction. <clears throat> they looked at the uh, uh, clinical characteristics of these patients and looked at the outcome. And that was a seminal paper where the products low flow, low gradient, severe aortic valve stenosis have been introduced. But look at that. Not until five years later, the guidelines picked up on this. So in 2012, the European guidelines have now endorsed and acknowledged the product of slow flow, low gradient, and severe request was this nomenclature, and uh, 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 from then onwards, it has been taken over and continued in all the rest of the uh, valvular heart disease management guidelines. So what's the prevalence of this uh, phenotype? Now, I've uh, listed and uh, borrowed uh, some of the images uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from, from a published paper. Uh, the, all, all the three phenotypes that we are talking about, and you have heard uh, some of my colleagues talking about the uh, low flow, low gradient, severe person with, with reduced ejection fraction, which I will take out from there because that's not a topic of discussion for me today. today. The normal flow, classic normal flow, high gradient, delta gradient, those patients are the ones that we do like to talk and, and see the most because that's a very easy and simple uh, 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 diagnosis to make based on the aortic valve areas less than one centimeter square. The mean gradient was more than 40, peak gradient more than 4, and of course, preserved LV systolic function <clears throat> and the stroke volume higher than, the stroke index higher than 35 meters per uh, meter square. That classic uh, uh, normal flow high gradient uh, uh, patients group uh, represents around uh, between 50 and 70 percent of the uh, severe aquavirus of this patient group. Our uh, topic of discussion today is the low flow, low gradient severe aquavirus of this products. A paradoxical low flow severe aquavirus patients group. They are the ones that are characterized by an aortic valve area of less than one centimeter square. That's the effective orifice area by continuity acquisition. The flow less than 35%, uh, the mean gradient less than 40 with mercury, and the peak velocity less than four. And of course, normal systolic functional preserved left hand cystic functions. They represent, depending on the literature that you take, between 5 and 25% uh, of the uh, severe aortic valve stenosis population. <coughs> so that's the uh, 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 graphical presentation of our uh, 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 paradox low flow severe aortic valve stenosis patients group and the components that we do need to uh, uh, measure uh, during our acquisitions to then to make that phenotype, uh, the diagnosis of this, this phenotype. And that is our left ventricle outflow tract area, measured from the left ventricle outflow diameter. The aortic valve uh, in itself, how it behaves, uh, the cuspidality and the uh, uh, degree of uh, uh, calcific, calcific plaques on it. The aortic valve VTI and the LVOT VTI. Of course, we need to know the ejection fraction as well to complete the phenotype of these patients. So who are these patients? So the clinical profile of these patients are the one uh, who have got reduced arterial compliance, usually related to atrial sclerosis or increased uh, systemic resistance, for example, due to hypertension, but also valvular arterial impedance. They are female uh, uh, in preponderance and have got small body surface area, small left ventricle signs and left ventricle uh, outflow tract area. And these two uh, are very important because if they were to be considered for valve replacement surgery, these are the two parameters that are making these patients more prone to develop patient prosthesis mismatch. And of course, the coexisting conditions of these uh, products, low flow, severe aspirations patients could be uh, uh, partly contributing to this phenotype, this atrial fibrillation, mitral valve regurgitation, or restrictive filling patterns. We heard lots about the uh, 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 blood pressure controlling patients with severe aquaristenosis thus far, and that's also valid for these patients to measure the uh, to, 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 uh, phenotype them accurately. 
And of course, those patients who have got very small blood surface area, the aortic valve area should be indexed. So what does the, the, the uh, uh, guideline say, and that has been uh, for the last uh, 10 plus years? Uh, once we have uh, measured aortic valve uh, uh, mean gradient and peak velocity, that will fulfill the, the low flow, low gradient uh, phenotype. Uh, we look at the aortic valve area less than one centimeter square. But the most important thing, and that's what the guideline emphasizes on, is to uh, uh, correct for the blood pressure values. And they said that 140 or 8 minutes mercury or below value should be the blood pressure that we are uh, uh, achieving in patients before we do the echo measurements of their flow gradient and velocity. And more importantly, to exclude measurements errors uh, that may underestimate the gradient flow and the valve area, and then define the flow status. So uh, that's the blood pressure that we need to try to achieve be before we do the echo scan in these patients uh, suspected for PLF. And how do we measure the, how do we correct for the measurements? So that's what I'm going to spend my next uh, five, 10 minutes to go through. So that's the valve uh, uh, motion that we are looking at, <coughs> uh, uh, the, the valve, uh, how healthy and how, how restricted in its opening is. And of course, we are also measuring the flow in the outflow tract area and across the aortic valve. Uh, to get the, uh, 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 to the principle of the continuity equation. I do apologize for getting down to the basics, but I thought it's probably useful for us to uh, 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 reflect on this. The principle of the continuity equation is that of a cross-sectional area. By changing the cross-sectional area, it does affect the velocity if we want to maintain a fixed flow in a steady state. And that's what it will roughly mean. So if we, have got, if we uh, want to keep the flow uh, uh, constant and the, uh, uh, from three lanes of, 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 of motorways, we reduce down uh, due to building work into one lane, then certainly the velocity has to increase by threefold to achieve that. And that's what is also termed as a base on uh, of a conservation of mass. Uh, principle. So the flow in, uh, in other uh, cardiac terms now within the LVOT should be equal with the flow across the aortic valve. And that's what I put it now into our uh, 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 equations that we uh, know very well, the uh, continuity equations and how we get to the aortic valve area here. The three main components of that, that left uh, air, um, ventricle outflow tract area, which is uh, the uh, uh, half of the pi square of the left ventricle uh, outflow tract diameter, we multiply it by the LVOT VTI and divided by the aortic valve VTI. I'm going to now uh, before I do that, uh, spend time to go through this. I'm going to just put you this one, and I do apologize uh, for this uh, philosophical uh, kind of uh, uh, sentiment that I thought I may just put it to us here, because that's exactly that we are facing within the daily practice when we do assess our patients with aortic valve stenosis. Can we measure aortic valve area by the continuity equation correctly? Is it possible? Or are we just setting us uh, uh, into a task that is failing? by definition. And why I thought uh, 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 that this question may be relevant to us, I put it in one long sentence. If you just focus on the, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, on, on the highlighted words there, I'm going to read this out for you for two seconds here. So uh, can we measure the aortic valve area correctly by continuous equations? We are basically doing, in a living subject, we try to measure the valve area and the flow of a highly regulated organ that is the heart that is hidden in rib cage. Applying the theory of physics of fluid dynamics with simplified equations, calculating circular area from measuring the diameter of a non-circular surface, and time integrals in different structures of the heart at different time points, and hoping to provide the most accurate measurements of aortic area, stroke volume, and gradient. Even the most highly trained sonographer, like all of you here, who takes the measurements with no variability, this can be impossible. All we can do is to make sure the image and the flow acquisition and the measurements from those data are the most accurate. And that's what our task is in the daily practice. Let's go through now the components of the, uh, 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 of the uh, continuous equations to see how we should do it, how we do it. Let's start with the alveoli diameter area. Alveoli diameter. So the recordings and the measurements, these will be the themes that we are going to talk about as per the recommendations by Baumgartner's 2017 uh, publications. So how do we record the LVOT diameter? We use the plus long axis view, we zoom it up, 
And of course, we need to make some gain adjustment to optimize the blood tissue interface. Once we acquired it and recorded it, we do the measurements, which is relatively simple. Uh, we measured the, uh, uh, at annulus level parallel with the aortic valve plane, in edge, in edge uh, distances, and mid systole of the in mid of the cardiac cycles. And that sounds rather okay. The problem comes that the aortic, the LVOT area assumed to be circular, but in fact, in more than 83% of the, of the patients is non-circular, but uh, uh, hourglass uh, morphology. And you can see that, especially in patients with moderate aortic valve that's pretty much the case. And this looks like this. If you measure the aortic valve, uh, or the LVOT uh, uh, diameter near to the annulus, in patients, in this 83% of the moderate to severe aortic patients, you are probably uh, getting close to the realities. If you go five, 10 millimeters below that, uh, more proximally into the outflow tract, uh, depending on uh, how low you go, you may underestimate by between 10 to 21% or even more than 21% the uh, stroke volume or the aortic valve area. Look at only 17% of the patients with moderate to severe aortic valve stenosis have got cylindrical LVOT geometry, which means that the uh, diameter is correctly used and the, and, and the circular equation is uh, applied pro properly. But that's very mild. Three minutes. Three minutes, thank you. Uh, the um, <clears throat> other problem is that the parasitic long axis view that uh, we are measuring the alpha, alpha, uh, 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 diameter from <clears throat> is a oblique short diameter of something that you can see here in red. But once we acquired it, that's the number that we can use and we, we, we can uh, uh, calculate the uh, LVOT area. You can probably appreciate how vulnerable this diameter is to help to derive the aortic valve area from. The recommendations, therefore, as a solution uh, uh, say that we have to just measure the LVOT uh, diameter at the annulus level. We can use the hybrid method, where I think one of the speakers already alluded to, where the, CT, where the LVOT area is derived from the CT, uh, uh, CT uh, uh, planimetry, and then it's uh, uh, implemented into the continuity equation uh, uh, to accurately describe the LVOT area. This is all the additional test, additional expenditure, radiation potentially involved, and if it's done by TOE, it's semi-invasive. And that's what the uh, uh, DASH group has uh, uh, shown to us. The other issue that we can do to uh, uh, help the LVOT diameter is to use the correction factor. And I do apologize for spending some time on this because that's our research group's uh, achievement that we have uh, looked at in 400 patients with uh, cardiac CT images where we have derived uh, the uh, uh, correction factor from uh, and we, uh, a single number to our uh, 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 major surprise came 1.13 that if we multiply the, uh, the left ventricle outflow diameter with uh, we are uh, uh, able to have a much better correction uh, or, or corrected LVOT area that reclassifies patients from severe aortic stenosis to moderate aortic stenosis by 39%. And this could be uniformly used in a wide range of patients uh, 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 that we have shown in our uh, uh, reported uh, uh, report. And that's what it looks like. So we, in multiple reconstructions, we have measured the LVOT, area, LVOT diameter mimicking as an echographic parasternal long axis view. And we also measured the planimetry of the LVOT area that we then forced into a circle, assumed to be a circle, and we derived a diameter from it. And this derived diameter, we divided by the measured diameter uh, to then to uh, uh, define the correction factor. We then validated this on a French severe uh, 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 data set registry. Uh, uh, on 1,450 uh, severe transplants patients and what we, with normal ejection, normal ejection fraction. And what we found is that 39% of these patients have been reclassified from severe to moderate aortic valve patients. Those who have been reclassified uh, to moderate aortic valve they had much better outcome. Patients with low flow uh, using the correction factor have been uh, reclassified by 77% into normal flow uh, uh, patients group. And you can see again, it had a prognostic implication. LVOT VTI, how we do measure the second component. Of course, we record it in apical five chamber view and three chamber view uh, with a uh, pulse uh, wave Doppler velocity. The sample volume should be placed at a valve level <coughs> uh, 
and then to retract it proximally until aliasing disappears and smooth linear velocity curve spectral envelope is visible. The sweep speed should be 50 to 100 millimeters per second. And then the measurement itself is straightforward in contouring these uh, 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 signals. The continuous, uh, uh, the AV, uh, aortic valve VTI uh, is using the continuous wave Doppler velocity assessment, <clears throat> recording again 5, 3 chamber U. I would just raise the awareness and important point to make it accurate, we need to do it from several views of the, of the aortic, valve, uh, 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 aortic valve. And that should require us to use the non-imaging probe, the pad of probe, <clears throat> To, uh, from the apical five chamber, uh, the right parosternal views and the suprasternal views to get the uh, appropriate and the highest velocity we can have, because that's the uh, most important part of the aortic valve VTI measurements to not to introduce measurement error. So that's where we are now. So uh, basically, a summary slide on the bottom here says that uh, the aortic, the aortic, the LVOT uh, 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 area is easy to record by measuring the diameter. The measurement is easy, but there's high level of inaccuracy by uh, assuming the non-circular geometry. That could be helped by either a hybrid method or the correction factor introduction. The LVOT VTI recording is easy if you know how to do that. Measurements is simple and a low level of inaccuracies. The, audio, the, the aortic valve VTI, the recording is difficult and we have to uh, uh, use the pad of proof to, to acquire the highest velocity here. Once we acquire the measurement is easy and the high level of inaccuracy comes from the uh, uh, inac inaccurate uh, pressure uh, detection. This slide also tells us, and I wanted to point this out, that the, how, how complex and how powerful the uh, effective orifice area of the aortic valve by the continuation is since it incorporates the peak velocity values, incorporates the mean gradient values, captures the uh, dimensionless index, the velocity ratios, and the stroke volume all in one. So if we measure all these parameters properly with the least uh, uh, error, we have got a huge, uh, a powerful uh, 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 value as effective orifice area to work on and to use in our daily practice. And that's, of course, in patients with preserved digestion fraction uh, 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 only. I have got one minute to summarize and I, I'm halfway through my talk, so I probably just jump now to the summary. The bottom line is that basically those patients who are classifying to the PLF patients, the current guidelines recommend to uh, perform a, a CT angiogram to look at their valve calcification because the calcification of the aortic valve is correlating very well with the severity of aortic valve stenosis. In women, this calcium score is 1,300 or higher and in men is 2,000. And once they have got this uh, calcium score added to their values, then uh, they can uh, be managed. Now, is it important? It's important because it has been shown by the Hachicha paper that the uh, PLF patients, the product low fluorogen patients, uh, have got worse outcome in this observational study over five years period than the normal flow severe person's patients. More importantly, both the, uh, the, the PLF and the uh, normal flow patients benefit from uh, surgery if they reach the severe uh, aortic person this degree. And that's the matters of the 18 observational studies that have been recently pu well, published 15 years ago to then to show exactly that the mortality uh, of the low flow, low gradient patients or PLF patients is worse uh, compared to the other phenotypes. And uh, they will, all phenotypes in, in particular, but also the low flow gradient patients will benefit from aortic valve surgery compared with medical treatment. And that's the two uh, major guidelines by ACC and the European guidelines have now uh, listed the paradoxical flow logan patients populations for uh, 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 class one recommendations in the states based on non-randomized control trials with this pooled observational studies meta-analysis. And the European uh, uh, says that uh, 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 intervention should be considered in PLF patients at a 2A class level. So that's the summary slide. You can read it, I can see it. The home take home message probably is within that. Product low flow severe atherosclerosis patients is a new entity, only 10 years old. The product low prevalence of this condition is 20 25%. The accurate recording of, uh, and the measurements is essential because that's the crux of the whole problems. 
Uh, PLF severe atrial stenosis binge has very poor prognosis and can be modified with intervention, class 1 and 2A. And that will be my next part of the talk, which I'm not going to, to, to give now, is that better the, sh the flu should be taken as a phenotyping uh, tool or whether we should use it as a prognostication tool. And that's uh, uh, based on studies that <coughs> they have been involved in as well. And uh, the provocative test is, yeah, do we need a phenotype of PLF or not? Or shall we just use them as severe symptomatic aortic valve stenosis patients as one group? I will stop here because that's my 10 extra minutes that I can't do for you. Uh, thanks so much. Great. Thank you for that great talk.